Let's start working on the interpretation of formulas. So you'll find formulas to resemble algebra quite a bit. The ones are understood. And if something's right next to the elemental symbol, like how there's a two right next to this carbon, then it applies specifically to that atom. However, if you see a set of parentheses, then that number has to be distributed to all of the elements in the parentheses. So I'm going to distribute this to, to the carbon, to the hydrogen, and to the oxygen. The magnesium's outside of the parentheses, so the two doesn't impact the magnesium. There's a one next to the magnesium that's understood. So at the end of the day, I can say we're looking at a compound composed of one atom of magnesium, four, two times two, four atoms of carbon, six atoms of hydrogen, and four atoms of oxygen. For letter B, very similar situation. The calcium does not feel the two because the calcium is not inside the parentheses. So I have two atoms of calcium. Now in terms of the distribution, I'm actually distributing to these ones that are understood. Chemists don't write the ones. If you don't see um, a subscript, it's called, you're going to assume a one. So we have two hydrogens after the distribution two carbons, and six oxygen. On this one, I apologize. Sometimes um, with typing these things, um, it's hard to know if you're looking at carbon and iodine or chlorine. This is chlorine. So we're looking at HClO4. Always ask me, please, please, if you're taking a quiz or whatnot and you can't distinguish between um, chlorine and iodine or, or carbon and iodine or chlorine, it can get confusing um, if that's an I or an L. Anyways, no parentheses. So this is just one hydrogen, one chlorine, and four oxygen. The ones on the hydrogen and chlorine are understood. Here we have another set of parentheses. So we're going to do 2 times 1, so 2 nitrogen, 8 hydrogen, and then the 2 is just for the parentheses. There's only one sulfur in this compound. Let's go over some guidelines for writing formulas. First thing, you're going to write the elements in the order that they appear on the periodic table. And you're going to read that periodic table from left to right. So something that's in group 1A, like sodium or potassium, would be written first before an element that's in group 7, like fluorine or chlorine. Your second guideline is basically an exception to the first rule. So typically hydrogen is written first in the formula because it's in group 1A. But if you're dealing with an element in group 4A or 5A, hydrogen needs to come second or after that element. So in example A on page 10, we're asked to come up with a formula for this Lewis dot structure. A, B, and C are all Lewis dot structures. You're going to learn eventually how to draw these. They're really cool because they show the bonds and the number of electrons around each atom. But for now, I want you to be able to look at a Lewis dot structure and interpret what you're seeing, kind of come up with a formula. So in this particular example, we have two chlorines, two hydrogens, and one carbon. So if I go to my periodic table, hydrogen's all the way on the left, then carbon, and then chlorine. So I might think the order is HCCl, because I'm reading it from left to right. 
But remember, we have that guideline that tells us hydrogen is going to come after our 4a and our 5a elements. So I'm going to change the order and do C H C L. Since I've decided that the order is C H C L, I'm going to write that down. And then we count it one carbon. One is understood, so I don't need a subscript there. Two hydrogens. So this is going to have a subscript of two and two chlorine. So I'll put a subscript there. In example B, we have one of our polyatomic ions embedded in this structure. And as we get into nomenclature, you're going to memorize all those polyatomic ions. So this polyatomic ion is nitrate. It's NO3 minus, which means that the nitrogen is connected to the three oxygens. So we're going to write this as HNO3 with the hydrogen coming out front. And so that's kind of a violation of our second guideline that says, well, we have a group 5A element. Shouldn't the hydrogen come after the nitrogen? Just like we saw over here with the carbon, the hydrogen came after. The problem with that, if we write it like NHO3, it kind of makes us think that the nitrogen is attached to the hydrogen. And that's not the case here. But the rule of thumb is that if you recognize a polyatomic ion in your structure and you're attempting to write a formula, keep the elements of the polyatomic ion together. Don't try to push anything into the middle of the polyatomic ion. In letter C, we have one of my favorite molecules, acetic acid. It has hydrogen, carbon, and oxygen. So if I'm reading the periodic table from left to right, I would write H, C, and O. However, guideline number two tells us that hydrogen always comes after our group 4A or 5A elements. So the correct order is C, H, O. Now I need to count. There's two carbons, four hydrogens, and two oxygens. So this is one way that I can write the formula for acetic acid. The other option is to divide the molecules into subsections. So on the left, I have CH3. Then I have carbon attached to oxygen. And then I have an oxygen attached to the hydrogen. Mm -hmm. This gives us a little bit more information, and we can tell that one of our hydrogens is directly attached to the oxygen. On D and E, we get to look at what's known as space filling models. So the different atoms are attached to one another or bonded to one another but instead of explicitly showing the bond as a stick, they kind of just jam the two atoms together. My molecular modeling kit uses the ball and stick approach. So this is this. Typically, a red atom is going to be oxygen. And then the two white atoms are hydrogen. So we're going to do left to right. H is going to come first, and oxygen will come second. And then there's two hydrogens. There's one oxygen, but the one is understood, so we're not going to write that. So blue in the molecular modeling kits a lot of times is associated with nitrogen. And then we have three hydrogen atoms as well. All the white ones are hydrogen. So normally, I would read from left to right on my periodic table and write HN. But since nitrogen is in group 5, 
we need to write the hydrogen after the nitrogen. So I'm going to do NH3. And that's because the nitrogen's in group 5A. For my next example, we have a really big molecule. So it's got quite a bit going on. It's got a ring. And within the ring, we can see double bonds. So we actually use two of the little plastic bonds to create that double bond. In addition, we have this side chain with a double bonded oxygen on it. So what is the formula for the compound in letter F? Let's count everything up. We got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. We got nine carbons. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Eight hydrogens and one oxygen. So from left to right, it'd be HCO, but we have a group 4A element. So I'm gonna put CHO. So this is gonna be C9H8O1, where the one is understood. On letter G, we have a long chain molecule. It has one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, eight carbons. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen hydrogens and one oxygen. So the order is going to be the same order that we established over there. C, H, O. I'm going to do C8, H18, O1. If we want to give more detail about the connectivity of this molecule, we can subdivide it into sections and then use that as the basis for writing our formula. So for instance, we're going to start with CH3. That's followed by a CH2. Another CH2 after that. Another CH2 after that. You guys are seeing the picture here. We just want to make sure we get the count right on something that's this repetitive. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. So 7 CH2 units. And then the last thing is an O and an H. That seems like a lot of work and it's super repetitive. So your last option, and any of these options are correct, would be to say CH3, CH2, put that in parentheses, and then you can put a subscript of seven since it comes out seven times, and then OH. The last example here is a super common compound. And actually several of these are. We have H2O, which is water, that's the common name. NH3 is ammonia. Ammonia used to be really common in terms of cleaning. It has an off-putting smell, kind of smells like piss, but they still use it a little bit in Windex. It depends on what kind of Windex you buy. It has ammonia in it. Letter H is such a cool example. We have sodium chloride, and if I count it right, I think we have 14 sodiums and 14 chlorides. I wrote sodium first because it's in group 1A, and chlorine comes second because it's to the right in group 7A. Now this compound, the way it's drawn, looks a lot different than the other ones. And that's because these are covalent compounds, covalent molecules. This is an ionic compound. And we're always going to write our ionic compounds in their reduced forms. So we're not going to write Na14Cl14. We're simply going to write NaCl. Because in any salt molecule, the sodium is in a one-to-one -one ratio with the chlorines. Just so we can appreciate how cool the diagram of the sodium chloride is. 
if you examine some salt, I was looking for a larger rock salt and the best I could find at home was Himalayan pink salt. So if you look at the salt, even if it's a different color, you see how it's very cubic in nature, right? So each of those edges um, is flat. And I always thought it was super cool how if you break apart a piece of salt, it's still cubic. Even if it's a fine grain and you use a magnifying lens or a microscope, we still see cubic structure. And that's because of the way the sodium and the chloride attach to one another. If we go back to our image here, we can almost envision the pattern repeating in more and more directions, and it does. If you've ever seen a humongous chunk of salt, it's still got those cubic edges. And so we're not really limited to the size and regardless of how it grows and in whatever direction, we still have like flat faces to the salt.